anytime, any day. Why not right now? Stop looking up to your boss and start being your own boss. Don't work for paychecks. Work for dreams with no regrets. This is Cracking the Entrepreneur Code. If you have the passion, we'll create the blueprint. Now, your host, you know him from his seven tips to build the business you always wanted, and now you're about to hear a lot more. Jack H.M. Wong. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Cracking the Entrepreneur Code podcast show. I'm your host, Jack Wong. And today, we are going to bring out another successful entrepreneur by the name of Gabriel Spencer. So allow me to just share with you who Gabriel is. So this is a lovely lady, very experienced, and she is actually known as Practical Spiritualist. She combines more than 20 years of successful corporate experience with more than 10 years of soulful business savvy to assist soul or spirit-based entrepreneurs with their businesses. Her mojo is to empower visionary and entrepreneurs, change makers and business owners to discover align with and activate their true purpose, passions, and gifts so that they can do what they love strategically and create a lucrative, and the word is lucrative business and abundant life filled with freedom, love, wealth, and happiness. What a wonderful way of introducing Gabriel on this show. Hi, Gabriel. How are you today? Hello. Thank you so much. I'm doing great. You're doing great. It's a wonderful way to approach business, isn't it? That's yeah, I agree. All of this together, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I, always tell, I always tell people that if you want to start a business, you must be enjoying the process. You must find what you love to do. And obviously, the word passion is always the first thing we are asking. And the second thing is that uh, we, I just have an episode with another guest uh, a few weeks ago, and what he shared with me is, are we living in the world of abundance or are we living with the, in the world of scarcity? So if we have, the, if we have this abundance in ourselves, we see things very differently as opposed to someone who is living in fear and scarcity mode. So I love you, you share with me as part of your introduction. So would you be able to share with us a little bit more about yourself? Like how do you end up doing what you are doing right now? Because you do have a 20 years track record of corporate experience. I have 17. You have beaten, you have beaten me. You have more you. than 20. Yes. I have more than 20. Yes. Um, well, how does it come about? I, I will tell you that I had a great corporate career and I was making well into half a million US dollars a year mm. in I lived very well, I had, you know, mansion in Scottsdale, Arizona, which is a very wealthy area in the mm-hmm. US. Yep. And, uh, you know, I had uh, the great vacations. I tell everybody the thing I actually miss the most is having limos come to pick you up to take you to the airport for your vacations, what? pick you up Limo? when you get back. Wow. I know it's like, <laughs> how silly, right? But that is yes. what I miss. I actually miss like, being pampered in that you don't have to deal with the everyday things like, you know, the lawn, your house gets cleaned and, you know, it just is a, it's an expensive way to live, to have to hire other people to handle that, those tedious tasks that just take up time and energy that you would rather be living your life or just enjoying your life by the pool or whatever. Mm. And that's what people don't realize that's where a lot of our energy goes, paying bills, taking care of the kids, shopping, going to the grocery store, all these things. And then of course, there's not a lot of time left, right? To deal Mm -hmm. with um, what your passion is, because frankly, most of us are so tired. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely was tired during those days too, because I worked a lot, but Mm -hmm. I had a a great life. And then what happened was the housing crisis happened. So even though I had fabulous experience, I had been a financial analyst, a banker uh, in banking. So I was working in the secondary markets. So we're talking more about the investment bankers and mortgage bankers and lenders and um, all sorts of lending that wasn't, uh, you know, you don't walk into the bank and see me. (laughs) You're in the background person, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I have a lot of years in finance and money, and I understand how all that 
works. And I loved it. And I tell everybody, I'm one of those weird people who I actually love my job. Now, of course, we all don't love everybody you work with, right? But there are always things and there's compensations for that, right? So Mm -hmm. it was good. And so when everything fell apart, it took a couple of years for everything to truly fall apart. But Mm -hmm. everything did. And when I look back at it, sometimes it's hard for me even to remember even the sequence of events because you know how it feels when something terrible and tragic happens. So I lost my job. Mm-hmm. And remember, I have a $1.4 million home mm. and my monthly running my home bills and paying the mortgage, et cetera, was about 12500 US dollars just to keep everything running and the lights on, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of money, but mm-hmm. it wasn't a lot of money compared to what I had been making, right? That was nothing. It was who cares? Write the check. Yeah. So <laughs> it was a lot of money when you're not making money. Mm. And so when that all fell apart, other things also began falling apart. And so that happened. Mm. Then many things. My mother-in-law moved in with us. I got pregnant and Mm -hmm. I was 40 years old. Mm -hmm. So that was a surprise. And Mm. uh, had my child and my husband was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. He lost his job. He went into video game addiction, basically just trying to withdraw from all the chaos that was going on. Mm. And when I talk to my clients, I tell them, this is when you're in the, you're attempting to do chaos management Mm. and chaos management, as we all know, is, you know, it's a suck of everything, time, energy, money. I mean, you just can't get your head above water. Mm. And of course it brought us to a brink of divorce, of course, And that place where you go, oh my God. And I think of it, there's a movie, it's an old movie with Bill Murray called Groundhog Day. And it's where every day he wakes up and he does exactly the same things every single day until he figures out the higher lesson he was meant to learn in order to break out of that cycle. Mm -hmm. And that is what happened when I look back, I think, oh my God, that was like three years of our life where it just went bad, bad, worse, worse, worse. And, you, and you're almost afraid to think, what else? Oh my God, could there be anything else, right? Mm-hmm. So this was a period of time. But what I finally learned, and I call it you know, cracking my, my code, was that there was higher vibrational lessons that I needed to learn within myself. Now, it was already spiritual. I tell people I, I resisted my own my own stepping into my own power, which is really how connecting within yourself, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can call it many things. We can call it, you know, being spiritual, finding your life purpose, your passion, all of that. It's the Mm -hmm. same thing. It's going within and healing what's broken. I tell people when your heart, they say, oh, my heart was broken. It really is broken. They Mm -hmm. don't understand that there is an actual energetic effect of the trauma. And, you know, it can be many things. The fact that you felt unsupported or unloved or betrayed, all of those things. But it doesn't just settle in the heart. It doesn't just affect your heart. It affects your emotional body, your spirit, many layers of yourself on an energetic and Mm -hmm. multidimensional level. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for me, this was my wake up finally getting it. You know, I had been working with my clients, but I didn't get it for myself. Mm. Like, okay, I have to really figure this out here. And it just hit me. And I was like, oh my God, I see what's going on. And then I was able to move it and change that energetically and then moved enough of the energy. And this is where healing these aspects of yourself is so important because only when you're able to move it out of the way are you able to actually get movement and i mean so you spoke earlier about this this other person who was talking about fear and i talk about it as well and i call it survival driven abundance mm-hmm. fear based mm-hmm. which we all come in with survival programming that's your mind it's when your conscious mind subconscious mind are in control 
that's what's telling you what to do. It's giving you your ideas. It limits you. It's telling you, well, you can't do that. You can do this. These are your only options. Okay. So when you're mm -hmm. hearing that, then you know you're in a survival based frequency because I that's see. what we all come in with. We all mm -hmm. come in with that base programming and the mind is in charge of running that programming. Mm -hmm. So whenever you hear people say, uh, change your mindset. Well, you can't think yourself out of that mindset and just trying to change those beliefs. It doesn't work because mm -hmm. you are hardwired to have your mind be in control of your survival. Mm -hmm. Now, What happens is though that frequency, that survival based, that survival based driven abundance is a frequency of zero to 200 based on uh, Dr. David Hawkins' scale of consciousness. Okay. So when you look at the scale of consciousness, zero to 200, those are all the fear-based emotions. Mm. So you have sadness, grief, guilt, depression, anger, hurt, betrayal, all those things, uh, feeling worthless, undeserving, all of that is in a zero to 200. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So whenever those are triggered, that's about where your frequency is. And it's very hard to create any abundance that's sustainable or consistent. You might get lucky. It's like, a, it's what I call the one hit of wonders mm -hmm. is when, you know, you, you might've gotten something to work, but primarily you are, it's like you bang your head against the wall. It seems like there's an opportunity and you go toward it and then it closes or it really wasn't what you had been hoping. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when you're in that lower frequency. Mm -hmm. When your mind is in control, you are in those lower frequencies because that is our base programming that we come in with, okay? Mm -hmm. And so when we heal ourselves, when we heal our heart, our spirit, and then our mind, and in that order, because we have to bring ourselves in alignment. You have to get the very strong, powerful, sacred geometry of the triangle, something mm -hmm. so simple. We come in with our base triangle of body, mind, and spirit, mm -hmm. and that's your base programming. Mm -hmm. And then as you heal them, they evolve into your heart, your spirit, and your higher mind. Mm. And that is what then is in alignment and you've moved your frequency to purpose driven abundance. And when you are in that energetic and in that frequency, even if you get triggered and you have a moment of fear, the truth is it only lasts for a moment. It doesn't derail you for three years. Like for mm. us, you know, when mm. we were going through that, it's like we could not figure out how to get out of it. You just continue to run in that rat race and you can't seem ever to get the break or that lucky whatever in order to get through it, right? You think mm -hmm. to yourself, all I need is one really good break and that'll be enough. But no. that's, you know, that you're hoping for the, you know, one in 200 million chance that you're going to win the lottery at that point. So what happens is when you move your frequency, you're permanently because you've aligned these very important aspects within yourself mm -hmm. that's when you you step into your own power and you then also step into the flow of universal energy mm -hmm. and people that get you who are able to assist you provide opportunities or ideas whatever it is they just start pouring into your life there are some days when things happen so quickly and there's so much that it's all positive. So it's not chaos management anymore, but I still can't keep up with it, but in a positive way, right? And you're yeah. like, okay, I know that I said I wanted speaking opportunities. I got five in less than 24 hours. Mm. And you're like, okay, I know I said that. Now I have to respond to everybody, right? I have to provide them information, all this. I mean, and this is what keeps happening when you're in this higher frequency, you don't work as hard. You don't run into those dead ends or the detours or all the things that are keeping you from having abundance. And you're just sort of wasting your energy. I call it, you go from wasting that time, men, um, money, energy, and then in that survival place. And then suddenly that time, energy, and money, it just flows. And 
happens, it feels like magic because there's no other words that we have that explain it, but it just, it's like you're rafting on a river and you're just going with it and it just all comes together just as you need it to and it ends up being fun. And Mm. I tell people, I spend so much time have in awe, like, wow, look at what just happened and having fun and laughing about it going, this is great. So, you know, back then in my early entrepreneur days, I was fighting the tide all the time. Mm. You know, like I need to do this. I need to do that. I was told I have to do this. Well, I spent a lot of time, a lot of energy and a lot of money trying to launch a business. Mm -hmm. When I finally got into this alignment, this higher alignment that I'm speaking about. I don't do that anymore. And I've had so much success that you're going, wow, why did I fight so hard to stay in that lower frequency? I just, mm, that's true. you know, you, you know, you're like, why do that? But you do it because you don't know any other way and you, no one has shown you mm-hmm. or you didn't have the epiphany about it, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, I got the epiphany and the download for the information and I was able to do it. And now, you know, that's uh, what I teach people to do because this way is so much more fun. That's very, very important. So it's always the case to me. Like a lot of my guests on this show actually talk about the vibration, the energy stuff. And I heard very loud and clear that we need to raise our energy. If I have low energy, life happens to me. But if I have high vibration, high energy level, then I can create opportunities for myself. So that is what I gather from all the episodes that I have I've been involved about vibration and energy. Now the question is that from your experience, like what would be your process of helping your clients to shift from the survival mode to the abundance mode? It seems that it can be very easy, but what exactly is the tool that you use to help your clients to do that? My favorite tool and one that is so effective for people is actually so simple. It's forgiveness. But it's Ooh. not forgiveness that just is, um, I'll have clients say to me, I forgave her a thousand times. How many <laughs> times do I have to forgive her? <laughs> so like, she ha- he hasn't forgiven <laughs> the person yet. <laughs> That's right. Because you can tell yes. just from that, that it's like, exactly. well, obviously there's still a problem, right? That's very but, obvious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's because actually when you forgive from the heart and an mm. energetic, the energetic levels that I was talking about. Yeah. And I'm going to tell everybody how to do this. Okay. Mm. So mm. you have the tools. It's so simple. So you would just sit or lay down quietly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just lead everybody through it. So if they want to do it with me, then they'll have it on the recording and you can just fast forward it to this part as well and do it again every time. So close your eyes and allow your eyes to flutter. So don't hold them tightly closed. And I want you to roll your eyeballs up toward your eyebrows, about halfway up, allowing your eyelids to flutter, okay? And just take a deep, deep breath. Allow it to release. Give permission for your higher self to assist you, to forgive from your heart, every layer of your heart, to forgive yourself, to forgive all those who have hurt you, all those who have influenced you or affected you in a negative way. And if you have a specific name of a person, you may add it now. And we ask for the higher selves of those people to assist them to forgive you as well. Now, we see the white golden light just take all of this energy surrounding it and releasing it to universal energy and filling each person in every level of their being with the healing golden light. Take another deep breath and you may open your eyes. Mm. So so simple, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to do it. And of course, listeners, you have the recording. Please replay and listen to the sound of Gabriel's voice and repeat the process if you have to, but it's very simple. So thank you for sharing this process with my listeners. I've just 
stun it myself while I'm listening as well. While we're doing the interview, I'm doing this. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. It's, it's so powerful. The power yeah. of forgiveness is amazing. But what people don't realize is that they have to forgive themselves yes. as well for their part. They have to ask forgiveness from those people as well because right. in some way they, they were triggered as well for something. And it doesn't matter that we know what it is. That's not mm. the point. The point is that we, with our hearts, we're asking our higher selves to take it over. Yeah, I agree. us as a person. Mm, I agree. It's like, yeah. Gabriel, I have this definition of forgiveness. I learned it from my coach. Uh, my coach name is Mr. Blasinger, um, rich advisor for Robert Kiyosaki. And he taught me uh, the very profound definition of forgiveness. So I just want to share, I will just want to share with you his definition uh -huh. and then seek your, seek your, seek your opinion on whether this, this is useful in your case to help your client. So it's like just now you gave the example of like your client says that how many times have I, do I need to forgive the person? And we laugh out loud and say, obviously your client hasn't forgiven the person. So what Blair has taught me about forgiveness is, okay, I may be annoyed or frustrated with a particular person, and let's call this person A, and he may have done some harmful act on me before, and that's why I feel frustrated with, with, what, with what he has done with me. So the definition of forgiveness, yeah, according to Blair, is, okay, I may not be okay to really forgive that person, I mean, per person A. I, I, I have not really forgiven him because he's still not okay for what he has done on me but but what he said to me is pretty interesting he said that well i allow myself to let it go so that i'm able to move forward so that is his definition of forgiveness it's not okay yet i have i've given the choice of uh, permission to myself to let it go so that i can move on so what is your view on this definition? I think it's a good view. I think mm. that um, when you invite your higher self to assist you, that takes it out of the mind's need mm. to understand. Mm. And what I find for people is that the mind is what gets in the way. Mm. I mean, part of my story for people is that, look, I went from a very left brain person. I mean, mm. I was in finance. You can't get yes. more left brain than that, right? Obvious, yeah. Uh, obviously. And mm. so what has been really profound for me is not about getting rid of my mind or my logic, okay? It's been understanding that it's about bringing everything into alignment, mm. but you don't think it into alignment. That's where we're wrong. And people very hard, especially in the beginning, before your vibration is high enough to allow the mind to let it go. Like yeah. they want to, they mm. really do. But it's like uh, I used to say to my early mentor in my mm. 20s, when I started on my healing path okay. and I know I frustrated her so much, mm. but I would say, just tell me how to do it and I will <laughs> do it. And she's like, okay, you can't try. And I was like, I don't understand. I just, I don't understand what you're saying to me at all. And it was so frustrating because mm. she and I did not think the same. And the reason that people work with me is because I understand that you are in your mind because that's yes. how we're programmed, okay? Yes. And so I understand too that you're still in that survival-driven abundance mm. when you are doing and trying. But what I have found is that by giving the mind a job, okay, so mm -hmm. like when – I have you roll your eyes up. Generally, I would tell people who are working with me in private session, okay, I want you to have a chant like Om or Om Mani Padme Home or what, something like that that you mm -hmm. resonate with, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want your mind to be chanting that in your head quietly. Mm. That's your only job because your mind can help raise your energy so that you can release. It's not thinking about who you need to release, how you need to, what they did, and all those things because what that does is it re-triggers within you those feelings, which are then very hard to just let go because now you've just made it like a fresh wound. So when you do it just allowing your mind to participate but in a more positive way, like chanting these higher vibrational energy prayers mm. versus thinking about all the stuff, 
then it's better. It's why doing the audio like that we just did, you're giving over the need to think of it to your higher self. Your higher self is going to handle it. Mm. You don't need to handle it. And so that's, for me, I've found... For my clients, that's what they resonate to because you know what? You don't have to be in charge and you don't have to know all the reasons, but you know enough, okay? And you, you know enough to give the mind what it needs and yeah. you give the mind a job so it has something to do. And then you're able to move through the healing process a lot faster. Yep. So what you have just said is what I'm thinking also because like my story is very similar to yours. Uh, I'm primarily a left brain person. So the moment when my, my coach asked me to connect with myself, uh, I have the same thing. I have the same issue. Like, uh, what do you mean by connecting with myself? Uh, what are the steps? Is there a process that I can do? One, two, three, four, five. It's like, I didn't figure out what it is. Until a long, I mean, a long while later, what happened was that, I mean, I keep remember these three words, just trust the process. Trust the process trust the process and just one day something happened so now i just learned to accept don't need to know what exactly it is or why it happens that way just simply trust the process it's right. not and easy but... no it's not and it takes years and yeah. that's what you and i are both saying that way yes. it does take years so now that you and i have okay we get it like we had the epiphany finally one day yes, finally and and now, right, and now we're helping people so that they can do it without that, you know, 10-year delay. Yep. I mean, I laugh. I mean, I started my spiritual journey, if you want to call it that, my, the discovery of myself mm. uh, 20 years ago. I met my husband in Tibet in 1999. Wow. I went on a spiritual journey, right? Wow. So that was a long time ago. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, That's why. And. Mm. And so, and I tell everybody, you know, even when all this crisis happened, you know, we were spiritual. It wasn't that we weren't spiritual, but I definitely had not, I did not want to be a healer. I did not want to go down this road. I just wanted to stay as a corporate person, mm. you know, doing my spiritual stuff on the side. And, you know, I still had clients and I still did that, but on the side and it was not in I didn't merge those two aspects of my life. I understand. Yes. So the the point of all this is we don't have 20 years anymore where we are in the energetic cycle. Yes. Uh, it's moving so fast that people are literally drowning under the force of the energy that is coming in the planet all the time. And it knocks you out of alignment, whether you want it to or not. I mean, it does even for people like myself and others. Um, I'll have clients call me that have gone through my program and they'll be like, I don't know what's wrong, but I totally feel out of it. And I'm like, mm. yes, because mm. we have to, we're going to do a quick alignment for you and help you to merge these energies together so that now they're not like disjointed within you. It's kind of odd, but think of it like cogs in the wheel. Like somehow um, when the energies are coming in, it's like it's too fast. People aren't mm. able to assimilate it fast enough. So the point of this is that if you're not assimilating with it, it's burying you. And it's why people are feeling even worse in many cases versus mm. better. So it's like, I call it either you're riding the wave that's coming in of energy mm -hmm. or you're being buried by it. And so right now, this is why we're, we're all out here telling everybody, look, find the mentor, the coach, the trainer, whoever that you resonate with and get moving because also the blessing at this time is that you also don't have to put in 20 years. You get to move. It's like you get to go to fast. go yep. straight ahead, right? You don't need 20 laps around the board. You get we to have just... done that already. So why do you want to spend another 20 years to try yes. to figure out what, what exactly the process is? Yeah, that's what coaches and mentors are there for. Oh my, I have my own coach too. I have my own Same. coach because you know what? It helps you to focus. Yes. And I will tell you, and this is, we'll get to the business part now because this yeah. is so important and this is why I love what I do because I get to do the spiritual part, mm -hmm. the energy part, but actually make it applicable to everyday business and your life, which like, that's what I mean by bringing in alignment, my mind, with my spiritual side, the heart side, because now this is what happens. You know how to be in the flow mm. when your heart is open. And I don't mean, well, I love everybody. No, it's 
it's when it's healed enough that it's holding this mm. light that we talk about, mm. this energy that it's holding it and, and able to project it. And you know what a projector looks like? You know how it sends out that beam of light? Yeah. That's your heart, okay? It brings in the light from the universe and mm -hmm. it channels it through your body and out all around you. Mm. And this is what draws to you what you're experiencing. So if you're experiencing survival-based abundance, then you're going to be in that lack and struggle because you have only a stream of light, a very small pen light that's mm. coming out, right? That's and yeah. when you really are working on it, it, you might get it to expand a little bit and then you start to see some good, but it's really hard to hold it because there's too much chaos going around you. Mm. And so you're being dragged down by your surroundings, okay? Mm, well, that's very when, true. yes, it's so, it's so true. And the, the great thing is that it doesn't have to be that way and it doesn't have to stay that way. And it doesn't have to take a long time to make that transformation for yourself. So that's the exciting news. So mm. as you bring in more light and you're able to project more light through yourself into your surroundings, that is when everything just comes to you. I mean, I could tell you a a thousand different stories, not just in my own life, but for my clients. You know, I just had a client who just brought herself in $2.2 million hmm. from a situation where she was like, it's destroyed. Everything is gone. There's, we have nothing out of the situation. Hmm. And I said to her, let's just do a cleanup here and get mm. all this, you know, fear energy. Let's move it out and let's see what we're left with. And then and then get guidance about what you need to do. And she did six weeks later from, oh my God, this job is dead. There's no money here. We're, we're in trouble to, okay, we've just made a deal and uh, they're buying us out for $2.2 million. And you're like, Ooh. wow, that's pretty awesome, right? Yep. But it's holding that higher vibrational energy mm. versus, you know, what you're hearing or what you're being told, it's staying centered and just sending and holding that light for what you are wanting out of the situation. Mm. So it's lovely. And this is what we want for everybody is to be able to bring in that higher light through your heart. And as a business person, you do this every day and it becomes natural. And then everything, even when it doesn't appear, like in her case, when it doesn't appear that it's going to go your way, and it will go your way. Mm. But it, um, for her, it was not about just throwing in the towel and going, okay, well, we're totally in trouble here. Like we didn't have this in writing. And so they don't have to honor anything. They don't have to pay us out, etc. cetera, um, to, okay, actually mm. it's going it's going to be fine and it was her getting back in touch with her inner self without the fear and realizing okay wait a minute it doesn't feel like it is actually and on an energetic level it doesn't feel like that so again mm. you're separating what's happening all around you you're going to that higher vibration to be able to feel what the potentials are not what just the one lower vibrational potential does that make yep. sense yep Perfect. Okay. I so totally she tapped understand. into those other potentials mm. and held those. That's where she shined her light on those potentials and then walked away with 2.2 million. And it That's has been paid out, false. by the way. So exactly right. You're yes. like, oh my God. So the point of this in our business is to be at this higher level. So you are calling to you the other potentials when you're in a survival abundance frequency. I always tell everybody, you have the rock and the hard place. You have two, right? You only mm -hmm. have two choices and maybe doing nothing, right? Yep. True. They're not great choices. And people go, oh, I should have chose the other one. And I always say to them, <sighs> surely you didn't not choose it because it was the best choice and you obviously just chose the other one. That's not yeah. how you really operate, right? They were yep. not good choices either one because mm. you're at a lower vibrational frequency they're not going to be great choices mm. that's just how that works mm. but as you raise your frequency you get a whole bunch of potentials and you get different ones coming in all the time they're not stagnant like you only have rock in the hard place and that's it nothing else comes to you mm. but when you're at that higher frequency potentials are coming in all the time so what i learned 
about how to be a successful online business person and successful coach to bring in clients. When you're also at that higher frequency, you're able to send out uh, just your thoughts, truly. This is where you send out your thoughts and the universe delivers back. So you're sending out to your ideal clients mm. and they find you're sending out what you need to, you know, I need to get out there more. You know, I need to do speaking engagements. And then suddenly, you know, your inbox is filled. You know, somebody heard you on some show and boom, boom, boom. And before you know it, like you're overbooked. And so various things, but it keeps happening. But what I've found for um, business people is that they either are totally in the mind and all strategy, or they're totally in the heart and they're unable to be like, well, but I have to charge money. I have to make a living, you know, and they're, yes. so they're, they don't merge these things. Okay. And yep. so my thing is, yes, we're going to merge strategy with heart. Mm -hmm. So you're going to heal that heart, spirit, higher mind connection. You're going to heal that so that you are then able to work both sides and you yep. can approach your business strategically, but using the heart to actually keep you in the flow. So clients, opportunities, money, all of that flows to you. So that's the marriage we're looking for, right? And that's very lovely statements that you have made. Um, in my community, when people are focusing on sales, knowing that sales is the number one game for most entrepreneurs, if not all, they struggle and they said, well, you know what? The best thing on the planet is to find another guy who knows the advanced selling techniques, the closing techniques, so that I can improve my sales. And I always said, well, it's not really the case because what is your mind game, your personal development side, which is more important than the strategies. You need both. You cannot just say, I need the strategies only and nothing else. It doesn't work. Right. So doesn't I truly work. agree with you on that. So I'd love to actually have you like we have hit the 45 minute mark and I just need to conclude this episode uh, All right. with two things. And thank you for sharing your insight, your experience, which I, I truly immerse and enjoy. And now I look at the, my, my time clock, 45 minutes. Oh my God. But that's good. It's all good. That's what we say. My, my style of interviewing my guests is I do not like to be bossed up by the questions. I like to go with the flow. So that is the beauty of this show. I love that. And for, for Gabriel, you, the, the last two questions I have for you is, like the people who have been listening to my shows know that the second last question is a ritual. The ritual for me is to I've asked, I will ask my guest to give me a number one quote of his or hers to share with my, our listeners. And Gabriel share with me this quote from Albert Einstein. The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It can't be changed without changing our thinking. I'll let you explain to the audiences, to listeners, like what is this, why, why this quote and why it is important to you in your life, in your business. It's important because I've learned that it's not about changing your thinking by thinking other thoughts. It's by mm -hmm. changing the frequency from which you think. Yes, excellent. It's not changing our thinking because when I started my personal development journey, some coaches told me, you just have to change your mindset. You just have to change your way, the way you think. Oh, but how did I do it? I have no idea. <laughs> he said the statement is so simple, but it's very difficult to execute until like, I tap into the spiritual part, the personal development part, the personal development part where I realize that, oh, okay, so this is what exactly they told me to do. I got this. The epiphany comes and I'll never look back. It's very interesting. And we have spent so many years to figure this out. That is like, oh, <laughs> why do we have to end up doing that? I don't know, but there must because be a reason. Now we are the change makers showing others how to do it quickly and they too will yep. do it and then take, bring in the next level of understanding that we Yep. Have. That's yep. what we say. Like, like some people decide to be the coach of their clients. Some people like to be the trainers of their participants. Somehow, I do not know. I, 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 I obviously, if I were to be curious about the process, I would ask the question, why do I end up become the trainer of the trainer, the coach of the coach? I have no idea. 
<laughs> but because I guess the calling is there. Maybe universe need me to step up my game. It's your life purpose. Yeah, so so that's what I've been doing. So I empower entrepreneurs, empower coaches, empower trainers, speakers to get to lift up their games, to take their game to the next level so that I can play a bigger game too. So that's the essence of why I'm doing the podcast shows to invite most a lot of successful people coming to share the experiences because to me that is my way of healing. As I was listening to your your what you have shared with our listeners, it's actually a healing for me too. So thank you for doing a session for me. So thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Well, that's part of my gifts is actually healing, um, clearing, healing, and activations just are delivered through my voice, which is such a blessing and a gift. And so whoever listens, they will still be receiving that throughout our discussion. So it's yes. really a blessing. And I appreciate you. you having me on your show. I've really enjoyed talking with you and your but before audience. we end the last question is how do we know more about what you do is there any website is there any social media there pages is. we can follow yes well you can go out and get one of my free audios if you'd like mm. uh, that well people can do it's called unlock and unleash your abundance mm -hmm. and it is a clearing for the heart, spirit, and the mind to help you start to bring them into alignment. So you can do that at gabriellespencer.com forward slash unlock, U-N-L-O-C-K. So my name is spelled G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, Spencer, S-P-E-N-C-E-R.com mm -hmm. forward slash U-N-L-O-C-K. GabrielleSpencer.com forward slash unlock. And you can get that free audio. And I tell my clients and everybody, there is just as much jam packed in all my free audios as there are in my <laughs> program, because I just love giving gifts. I just love it so much because I'm touching people around the world like you are, Jack. Yes. And it is what lights me up just knowing that no matter what, people are getting to get some healing and help and just listen to the audios over and over and it will help you. I mean, I have people who listen while they sleep and just put it on replay because mm. it changes their lives so quickly. Mm. Having this deeper multidimensional healing, it's beautiful. So I encourage everybody uh, to do that. And there are other audios on gabriellespencer.com as well. So Lovely. Thank you for this gift to my listeners. And on behalf of my listeners, I truly appreciate your presence in this episode. Share with us your biggest gift. Thank you very much, Thank Gabriel. Very much. So that concludes our record lengthy episode. I know it's already 15 minutes, but I do hope that you, uh, you truly immerse and enjoy this show. And I haven't really announced it many times. I do realize that, please, listeners, you may want to rewatch and re-listen to this episode. I bet I definitely will do it a few times. So if I do it, would you be able to do it? Would you be committing to doing it? I don't know, but let's see how it goes. So that concludes these episodes of Cracking the Entrepreneur Code. And in our next show, as you know, I'm going to bring on another successful entrepreneur who is going to share with you the wisdom, the intelligence and experiences to help you take your business to the next level. Until we next meet, Jack Wong here, I'm your host and I'm signing off now and bye-bye. To continue cracking the entrepreneur code, subscribe for more episodes and download the Amazon bestseller, Cracking the Entrepreneur Code, 7 Tips to Build the Business You Always Wanted at crackingentrepreneurcode.com. Learn more about author and host Jack H.M. Wong and book your 30-minute discovery session to overcome any professional challenge at jackhmwong.com slash apply.